Hi everyone, this is Jim. I've um, got another uh, viewer game for us to look at today. This game was also played by uh, Kalen at the uh, tournament in British Columbia, the 2015 BC Open in the uh, under 1400 section. So his opponent kicks off with e4. Kalen with the black pieces plays e5. Knight f3 attacking the pawn and then uh, f5 counterattacking. <laughs> so this is known as the Latvian Gambit, ignoring the threat to the e pawn and counterattacking. Uh, the e-pawn with the f-pawn, and also opening up the king. So it leads to exciting play, sort of like a reversed uh, king's gambit. Now this has been played uh, at t top levels, and um, actually it's an old opening. It, goes, it was originally called the uh, Greco counter gambit, but uh, some Latvian players in the uh, early 20th century uh, revived it with some uh, new analysis. And it has been played, um, well, the uh, Swedish Grandmaster Johnny Hector was uh, probably the most recent uh, Grandmaster to uh, play it at the top levels, but you don't see it too often. Uh, Johnny himself said, uh, well, the best thing I can say about this opening is it's not as bad as its reputation. But, uh, you know, for ordinary players, it leads to exciting positions and, uh, and interesting chess. So we go down the main line for a while. White takes the e-pawn, which wasn't defended. Black brings the queen out, attacking the knight. D4 supporting the knight, and D6 kicking it. And now the main move here is um, knight to C4. I'll show you a few more moves of the main line just to give you an idea. The knight comes here. Um, black takes the pawn. White uh, develops another piece. So white's following pretty logical principles and also attacking the e-pawn. And the queen goes here to G6, which uh, not only defends the e-pawn, but also uh, takes a look at the g-pawn here, making it difficult for the bishop to develop and slowing down White's castling. And so we have a funny position where uh, White has two pieces developed, the black has only the queen developed, um, but he is eventually going to uh, get his knight out and maybe push uh, d5 with the tempo on this knight. So um, there are possibilities here for, for black as well. With, uh, with best play, White should be a little bit better, but uh, anyway, it leads to interesting games. Um, but that's not how this game went. Um, instead of playing um, knight to c4, he just retrieved his knight back to f3. And now uh, black is just fine here. He gets the pawn back by taking on e4 and um, threatening, threatening the knight. Uh, white plays in an interesting fashion here. He develops a piece with a tempo on the queen. So there's no time to take the knight. He's got to move the queen out of the way. And then uh, he pins the pawn with the queen e2. So he's dealt with the threat to the knight. And, uh, and the bishop is defended by the knight. The pawn is not able to take the knight because the queen's pinned it. But uh, there are a lot of pieces hanging here. So actually, uh, this is a, a good <laughs> position for a tactics quiz. There is a, a way for black to win material right in this position. So uh, if you want to uh, pause the video here, see if you can figure out what black can play to uh, take advantage of uh, all these uh, pieces that white has that are nearly, nearly hanging almost hanging. Okay, I'm going to give the answer away. Um, the answer is uh, bishop to e7. If you think about it, this is kind of a double attack. Now there's two pieces on the bishop, so you're threatening to take the bishop, and at the same time, you're threatening to take the knight. And uh, But it's not so simple. It's white's turn to move, and he has the move bishop takes e7, which you might think uh, solves everything, because if you take back with the king, um, then you, uh, well, first of all, you reintroduce the pin. If you take back with the knight, um, then the, the pin is still on, but white has time to save his knight. It's his move, and he just gets to move his knight away, so the material stays even. No, the way to, to gain material is the move e takes f3, grabbing the knight, and now, once again, you've got two pieces that are under attack. The queen is under attack, and the bishop is under attack. And so the material is even here, but uh, white is going to lose a piece. And so that's how you gain material in that sequence. And um, also, it's important to note the discovered check doesn't work. So if the bishop moves anywhere with a discovered check on the king, the reply is just uh, pawn takes queen. That solves the uh, problem with the discovered check. So the best move here for white is to uh, take take the pawn, and then you take the bishop and you're a piece up. So, uh, so that would have been uh, a way to uh, uh, get, a, get a quick advantage. Not so easy to spot. I would say this is, that's a pretty, pretty uh, complicated tactic.
So uh, Kalen played the natural move d5, shoring up the center, preventing uh, the d pawn from advancing. And uh, bishop to f4, the bishop repositions, attacking the uh, c pawn. I think right here the move bishop to d6 is called for. That would uh, defend the pawn and develop a piece. And uh, black wants to get these pieces developed. He can, if he can develop the uh, uh, king side pieces, he can castle quickly and get more pressure on the f file. So I think that's the uh, more logical way to play. Kalen played knight to c6 here, and now um, white just grabs a pawn. Even here, um, it's, it's uh, still a little bit uh, tricky. Um, let's uh, show the game continuation. Uh, Kalen developed bishop e7, unpinning, and then attacking the knight. The knight came in to e5 with a double attack, hitting the queen and the knight. So it's pretty much uh, nothing better than taking, and bishop takes. So now white's got this uh, formation here where he's secured his extra pawn, and um, this bishop is, uh, you know, it's not going to be chased away from there all that quickly. So slight edge to white in this position. Still, this is the kind of position you should be willing to, to play if you're going to play the Latvian gambit. You've still got uh, ideas of uh, the open F file. You've got some center influence, and uh, so you have chances here. It's not like uh, white has an overwhelming edge. So let's back up. I just wanted to point out one other variation here. Instead of bishop e7, um, you could have tried the move bishop to d6, another move that's kind of hard to spot. Um, so it is just offering a trade. The thing is, after the trade, the queen is in a better position. Now if the knight comes into e5, uh, it doesn't have to, of course, uh, the pin is still on, but uh, the, the point I wanted to make is if the knight comes into e5, you can just trade it off. And uh, so this leaves black in, in actually a better position. He's grabbed this pawn in the center. He's got uh, better center influence. Uh, the development is about equal. And uh, so black has the advantage in this position. So that's that's the way to play that. Bishop e7, though, a reasonable developing move. And now we did go down the sequence. Knight e5 was played. Takes, takes. And uh, right here, uh, the move queen h6 was played. And so this move... Uh, you know, I have I have suggested some improvements for Kalen in some of those other moves, but uh, eh, you know, the computer is always going to find improvements. You know, <laughs> so I, I can't uh, I can't criticize any of those moves. The only move I, in this game of Kalen's that I will criticize is this move, Queen H6, which is a double-edged move. So first of all, uh, Kalen has spotted that uh, White has a weak back rank, and uh, this is uh, something that uh, would be good if uh, this would be a good move if black if white didn't have a, a reasonable way to defend. But uh, the thing is that white can defend very easily with the move knight to c3, which uh, he didn't play. So with the move knight c3, now this uh, the queen is is looking on uh, squares that don't do much. Um, white has gotten an extra move in development. And, uh, you know, black is just falling behind here. And uh, white still has this threat of queen to g5 check. So uh, that, that wins a pawn over here. So this is uh, just winning for white. So this move bishop to um, queen to h6, I, I think that's, that's a move that should be criticized here. Um, you know, it's tempting to play these attacking moves, but uh, really your job is to... Um, try and deal with the uh, situation you find yourself in. The best, uh, what you should be looking for here is a, a developing move that also deals with the threat of uh, queen here check, which is going to check the king and, and threaten to win the b pawn. So you can preempt that by playing bishop to uh, d7. That's probably the best move in this position. And now you, you've got, uh, like I said, the kind of position that uh, you should be okay playing if you like to play Latvian gambit because uh, um, you you're have a slight edge White has a slight edge, but uh, you still have the uh, open F file. You're going to develop your knight. You're going to castle kingside and uh, get some pressure and uh, try and try and go after the F2 pawn. So that's the way I think uh, this should be played. Okay, but let's let's look at the game. Queen H6 was played, and now uh, <laughs> well, the reason I had to make a deal about this pawn is because his opponent responds. Uh, uh, badly. I mean, I mean, I was making a deal about that particular move because his opponent plays a bad move here. Instead of just uh, defending against the threat with knight to c3 and developing a piece, he goes on an adventure here. He goes queen b5 check, 
And uh, this wins a pawn. Now white has a choice of picking up uh, either pawn, actually. Queen takes d5. And now uh, queen to c1 check. So, so uh, black is suddenly winning. So the move that I criticized is actually the move that wins the game in a way. <laughs> <laughs> because the queen comes here and uh, white didn't uh, defend it. But uh, you can't always rely on your opponents to uh, give you that kind of edge. So if you want to uh, improve as a chess player, you know the way to play is to uh, always look for the best move, even taking into account what your opponent uh, might play. Okay, so king goes to e2. That's the only move. And now uh, rook to c8 is the best way to continue the attack. Get another piece in there. Don't just keep... Uh, moving your queen around, but uh, queen takes c2 is played. And now um, this allows knight d2. The thing is, um, the knight is pinned in this position, so if you bring the rook to c8, you're immediately threatening to bring the rook here with check, and uh, and white still can't develop his pieces. So when you've got an attack going, you want to uh, you want to get more pieces into the attack if you can. So just to, to give a sample line, rook c8, and um, say C three to try and um, <clears throat> to try and uh, prevent the rook from coming into the C two square. Then you have this check, which uh, wins the uh, the rook in the corner. Um, so what other tries are there? It's not easy to defend this pawn. If the queen drops back here, then you have uh, rook take C two check because you have two pieces on it. So, uh, so rook, rook to c8 is, is the quickest win and uh, the best way to play it. It's general rule that uh, when you're engaging in an in attack, you should always look for those opportunities to bring up new force with threats. And that's what uh, rook c8 is, making a direct threat on c3 that the opponent can't meet. Okay, so queen takes c2 was played. And now, um, if, uh, if white had found the move knight d2, he might have been able to play on. Um, but he didn't find that. He moved his king. And now it's all winning. And this is a good move. I, let, me, let me point out the good as well. He, developing a new piece and bringing it into the attack. Um, bishop to f4 was used to block. Then there's this exchange which brings the king forward. Always fine to bring the king out into the center of the board. And now uh, queen takes f2 check. Chasing the king further forward. The king goes to e5. Queen to f5 check, defended by the bishop, and driving the king to uh, d6. Now the queen drops back to f6 check. King goes to c5, and can you find the final move here? Okay, queen to uh, b6 check was played, and uh, his opponent resigned. Tired of having his uh, king chased around. The game might finish uh, king c4. Now the rook comes to c8. And um, queen to c5 is the only way to stop uh, immediate checkmate. So uh, anyway, it wasn't, was not too soon for uh, white to resign. So in this position, after queen b6, uh, white resigned. So a nice game and a nice finish. Um, and like I said, uh, I think all those moves were, were pretty good. I always have suggestions for improvements. And uh, only, only one move that I criticize that, uh, you know, when you play an attacking move, you always uh, want to first look to see uh, what your opponent's uh, defenses are and make sure that, uh, you know, he, he can't uh, defend it or if he can defend it, that you have uh, good ways to deal with that defense. And uh, otherwise, uh, instead of continuing with the attack, uh, maybe bringing up, developing some pieces and, and doing the normal thing would be a better course. Okay, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Leave any comments you have in the section below, and I will see you again soon. Bye.